This video provides an overview of nucleic acids, where we will look at nucleic acids as the genetic material of living things, and the genetic code as evidence for universal common ancestry. We will look at nucleic acids, the structure of DNA and RNA nucleotides, including the similarities and differences between DNA and RNA, and finally, the structure and function of ATP, which shares structural similarities to the building blocks of nucleic acids. DNA is the genetic material found in all living organisms, making it the universal code of all life, from single-celled simple prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms to complex multicellular organisms, and even non-living viruses, which we will later discuss. Despite the immense diversity of life on Earth, the basic molecular structure of DNA and its role in storing genetic information is remarkably consistent across all these life forms. This universality underscores the shared evolutionary heritage of all organisms. The code has remained consistent over billions of years, starting with the single-celled common ancestor to all life. Taking a look specifically at nucleic acids and their role as genetic material of living things, we can see that DNA is the genetic material found in all living life forms. Viruses are unique entities. They straddle the boundary between living and non-living things, but they use the same coding system as all living organisms. Viruses have genetic material that can be either DNA or RNA, depending on the type of virus. Viruses can't carry out metabolic processes or reproduce on their own, so they must infect a host cell with their own genetic code in order to replicate. The fact that viruses use the same genetic code as all living things has significant implications. Because the genetic code is universal, viruses can potentially infect a wide range of host species. This is why some viruses can jump from animals to humans, such as with zoonotic diseases. It also allows scientists to use viruses as vectors in genetic engineering. One great implication of understanding more about genetic code is the creation of vaccines using nucleic acids, such as the mRNA vaccines developed for COVID-19. Let's take a closer look at the structure and function of DNA and RNA. First, let's look at the structure of DNA. The structure of DNA was first described by scientists James Watson and Francis Crick in 1953. Their model of the DNA double helix was based on experimental data from several other researchers, particularly Rosalind Franklin and Morris Wilkins. Their X-ray diffraction images of DNA were crucial in understanding the molecule structure. Watson and Crick's model revealed how DNA replicates and carries genetic information. The DNA structure is made up of two individual DNA strands, and they are twisted into a helix, as shown here. The double helix structure allows DNA to be tightly coiled and efficiently packaged into the cell's nucleus. DNA is a polymer, which means it's a larger molecule made up of smaller subunits, called nucleotides. Looking at the nucleotide building block here, you can see that each DNA nucleotide is composed of a nitrogenous base, deoxyribose 5-carbon sugar, and a phosphate group. The structure shown here is a convenient way to draw the nucleotide. Use a circle for the phosphate group, a pentagon for the deoxyribose sugar, and a rectangle to represent the nitrogenous base. Also note the numbers indicated on the deoxyribose molecule. This numbering system is significant for understanding the orientation and directionality of the DNA molecule. The numbering convention starts with the carbon atom adjacent to the oxygen atom in the ring structure, which is carbon 1. Moving clockwise, we can see carbon-2, carbon-3, carbon-4, and carbon-5. Carbon-5 is also connected to the phosphate group in the DNA backbone. Overall, there are five carbon atoms, which is why we call deoxyribose a five-carbon or pentose sugar. Let's take a closer look at how these nucleotides form a DNA molecule. Let's look at the directionality of the DNA molecule. DNA is anti-parallel, and this means that the two strands are parallel to each other, 
but have opposite directions, or alignment. A DNA strand has a directionality defined by the orientation of the carbons. When we refer to the 5' prime end of a DNA strand, the molecule is orientated towards carbon number 5. Conversely, the 3' prime end indicates that the strand is orientated towards carbon number 3. The genetic information is read, or synthesized, in the 5 to 3 direction. Each of the two strands is a polymer, and they form hydrogen bonds between complementary bases. These are weak forces of attraction holding the two strands together. This complementary base pairing is crucial for the accurate transmission of genetic information during cell division and replication. The complementary base pairs are adenine with thymine and cytosine with guanine, which we can see here. It's these bases and their sequence that form the genetic code. DNA nucleotides are joined together with covalent bonds, and they form through condensation reactions. We can see this reaction here, and this occurs between the hydroxyl groups of two nucleotides. One hydroxyl group is found on the phosphate group of one nucleotide, and the other is found on the deoxyribose sugar of another, specifically carbon-3 of the sugar. This creates a linkage or covalent bond between the phosphate group of one nucleotide and carbon-3 of the deoxyribose sugar of another. We can see this bond form here. And note that water is lost. This creates a strong sugar phosphate backbone, formed by covalent bonds for the DNA molecule. You should be able to identify or label the different bonding found within a DNA molecule. This would include the hydrogen bonds formed between nucleotides and covalent bonds in the backbone. Now that we've looked at DNA in detail, let's look at RNA. Now let's focus on RNA structure. RNA is a single-stranded polymer made up of RNA nucleotide subunits. Looking at the RNA nucleotide shown here, you can notice that each RNA nucleotide is composed of a nitrogenous base, a ribose 5-carbon sugar, and a phosphate group. Be sure to note that the ribose sugar found in RNA nucleotides is different to the deoxyribose sugar found in DNA nucleotides. We can see the difference here lies at carbon 2. In ribose, there is a hydroxyl group, whereas in deoxyribose, the second carbon lacks the hydroxyl group, and the carbon is bonded to hydrogen rather than oxygen and hydrogen. You can remember this because deoxy means without oxygen. Be sure that you can draw the structure of an RNA nucleotide. Again, using the circle for the phosphate group, a pentagon for the sugar, and a rectangle for the nitrogenous base. It's important to note that the bases in the RNA nucleotides are cytosine, guanine, adenine, and uracil. In RNA, uracil replaces thymine. Similar to DNA nucleotides, RNA nucleotides also join together through a condensation reaction where water is lost. So now that we have looked at RNA and DNA molecules, Let's compare them. We can use this table here to organize the comparisons. And we can look at these diagrams as well. Looking at the number of strands in the molecule, DNA is a double-stranded molecule. As we saw earlier in the video, DNA strands are arranged in a double helix structure, resembling a twisted ladder, held together by hydrogen bonds between complementary nitrogenous bases. RNA, on the other hand, is typically single-stranded. This single strand allows RNA to fold into various shapes and perform different functions within the cell. For example, coding in protein synthesis and forming the structure of ribosomes. Next, comparing the sugars, in DNA nucleotides, the pentose sugar is deoxyribose, but RNA contains ribose. Recall that deoxyribose is a five-carbon sugar which lacks one oxygen atom when compared to ribose. In fact, the difference in the sugar components affects the stability and function of the two molecules. Deoxyribose is more stable, and this is important for its role in DNA. Looking at the base pairs, we can compare the nitrogenous bases that pair with adenine. DNA contains four nitrogenous bases, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. The complementary base pairing is critical for the accurate replication and transcription 
of genetic information. RNA also contains four nitrogenous bases, but with a key difference, uracil is used instead of thymine. Now let's take a look at one other very important molecule, ATP. ATP shares the fundamental components of a nucleotide, which include a nitrogenous base, a sugar, and phosphate groups. Its job is to provide energy for cellular processes. Looking at the structure, we can see here that ATP is composed of the nitrogenous base adenine, a pentose sugar ribose, and three phosphate groups linked in a chain. A key difference, though, is the three phosphate groups, rather than one. ATP is a precursor in the synthesis of DNA and RNA. The energy ATP provides is held within the terminal bond shown here. These bonds are often referred to as high energy bonds because their hydrolysis releases a substantial amount of energy. When this bond is broken and the phosphate group is donated, energy can be provided for processes such as active transport, as shown here. When ATP donates a phosphate group in a process called phosphorylation, it can provide energy for the protein to pump molecules across the membrane against the concentration gradient. Energy is then required to convert ADP, the low energy form, to ATP, the high energy form, which is referred to as ATP synthesis, and this occurs in the mitochondria during cellular respiration. Remember, you are expected to understand that ATP transfers energy to other molecules via phosphorylation or donating a phosphate group. The following points were covered in this video. DNA is the genetic material of all living organisms, but viruses use DNA or RNA. DNA is a double-stranded helix composed of nucleotides. DNA nucleotides are composed of a phosphate group, deoxyribose sugar, and a nitrogenous base. In DNA, the bases are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. The backbone of nucleic acids is formed by covalent bonds, which are the result of condensation reactions. DNA is antiparallel, and hydrogen bonding between complementary base pairs links the antiparallel strands. RNA is a single stranded polymer composed of RNA nucleotides. RNA nucleotides are composed of a phosphate group, ribose sugar, and a nitrogenous base. In RNA, the bases are adenine, uracil, guanine, and cytosine. ATP is composed of the nitrogenous base adenine, a ribose sugar, and three phosphate groups. ATP provides energy for cellular processes through the release of energy stored in phosphate bonds.